let's hold on one second. Instagram's like giving me things that I don't, I don't know how to use. Why is this happening? Okay, I can't figure out what it's doing. Anyway. This video is just a little bit different, so um, I get a lot of questions about just kind of like what I do every day, and I think sometimes there's a misconception. This place is a complete wreck. We did a live stream the other day, so there's like symbols everywhere. Um, I get questions about what I do every day. Um, I think there's a misconception about what teachers actually do every day, drum teachers and everything. And uh, so sometimes when you actually get in the field, you realize, oh wow, this is a this is a different thing. I don't just spend all my time with a student. I don't just spend all my time playing. A lot of people think I get to just play all day, which I wish I did. Uh, it's 11 o'clock and I haven't gotten to touch drums yet. Um, but uh, I actually live stream this on Instagram. So it is, you know, one of those long skinny videos. Sorry, but I thought it, I thought it was an interesting look at really my what I do every day and so it's me prepping for a rudiment lesson in particular um, it takes me roughly 35 40 minutes to go through this sheet music and correct some stickings and find where I'm gonna need to brush up on things before I teach it uh, so whenever you're a teacher you spend a good bit of time on the material that you're teaching and uh, and I you know a, a teacher friend of mine teaches up at Berkeley uh, that's what he said he said people wouldn't believe how much practice time I put in weekly just to maintain the material that I need to teach for these classes because a lot of them are advanced classes and so when you're a teacher you don't get to spend all of your time just doing what you want to do many times you're spending a lot of time learning the material that you're going to be presenting and teaching so anyway this is a really uh, raw look at what a, a typical music teacher drum teacher, what I do. Mine's a little bit different because I shoot video, but um, it's, it's essentially the same, you know? I mean, it's, it's you prep for the lesson, you teach the lesson, you figure out how you, you stress over how you're gonna lay the lesson out and is that the correct order and are they gonna get it that way? So uh, hours and hours go into a very short video clip. Um, so anyway, here it is in all of its raw form. Hope you enjoy it. So I'm prepping for a lesson tomorrow uh, that I'm doing for my members on an inverted flam tap. And so this is a part of um, what I do that most people don't ever see, uh, which is spend a lot of time prepping for lessons that I'm recording. So I thought I'd just like, I'll let you in on it. So here's the deal, and I know some of you will join later, but you can just kind of deal with it <laughs> watching later. Um, I'm going through something called the rudiment smash up, and the rudiment smash up is something I wrote. This is the 39th rudiment. Uh, lesson I'm teaching so obviously one more and uh, and so the rudiment smash up is something that I wrote and it's uh, I don't know I think it's four or five pages long by now and it's a way to work on an individual rudiment but also review all the other rudiments so one measure stays the same while the other measure changes and focuses on whatever that is so I'm having to go through the smash up right now and there's always like a couple of turnaround differences with like the triple uh, paradiddle diddle or no the triple let's see yeah the triple paradiddle all of those like there's always a turnaround that needs to happen differently and so I'm going through and kind of just like checking these before I send it to, to Tim for him to, to pump out the sheet music for it uh, so yeah anyway the second measure is it go this will go through all well this will go through 38 of the 39 rudiments um, so the second measure, since it's inverted flam tap, is going to just be 16th notes. One, uh, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, and then the turn it around uh, flam paradiddle. So flam a diddle. And then, the, and then it would start on the other hand, but the first measure is the one that each time I move the line, like the first one's going to be single strokes, we have buzz roll, then we have uh, uh, double strokes, uh, paradiddles, flams, all of those things. So I'm kind of just, it's literally just going to be me going through and figuring this out. If you, if you dig something like the smash up I have, though, this will be the 39th rudiment lesson on the website with like tons of sheet music for it. But, um, anyway, this is kind of how the smash up goes. So I've got to go through it and, and just kind of adjust some things make mental notes of where things need to turn around and all that stuff. So single stroke, uh, this is the single stroke line. Double stroke. That one. 
game works. Uh, let's see. Paradiddle. Yeah, that works. Hard to get that first flame coming out of this. And again, this isn't me like running an extra, this is me actually just checking the sheet music I'll be teaching with tomorrow. So, what's going on, William? What up, Panda Drumium? Drum, drumium? Panda Drumium? What's up, guys? All right, so paired it works. Uh, then we got a flam. Yep, that one works. Uh, going on to, to single rough, single stroke rough. So this one has to start the rough on the right hand. Let's make sure that works coming out of that. Yeah, yeah, it works. Okay, then it starts the left hand row. That works. Yeah, so that's a, that's a hard one. It's, a, it's it, The sticking's hard, but it works. Yeah, that one works. Move the sheet down. Anybody that just joined, I'm proofing tomorrow's lesson sheet music. So it's a rudiment smash up that I wrote, and it's like five pages long. It goes through all 40 rudiments and focusing on the inverted flam tap. I've thought about putting this into a book because it's really an efficient way to work through the rudiments. But uh, we're on the single stroke four now. Just seeing if turnarounds work for this. Single stroke seven. This is where, whenever you get into the diddle rudiments, this is where it's, this is the second page of the rudiments mashup. This is where it starts getting kind of hairy. Anybody got any questions? No, no, no. What up, McNeely? All right, so second page, got a double paradiddle. That one works, but coming out of that that double paradiddle, there's three notes on a two, two, three notes on a hand. That makes it hard because you got to come into an accent from two unaccented notes. I like working my double paradiddles three different ways. Well, four different ways. No accents. Accenting the downbeat, accenting both right hands, both left hands. 
and then accenting the off beats. It's a fun way to run through them. Ah. Uh, that's fine. Anyway, so that one works. Uh, next line is, this is the one that always trips it up. It's the triple paradiddle. Uh, and it's also hard because that makes a three over four polyrhythm whenever you do uh, sextuplets with that. So we have to start the next measure on the left hand and the turnaround's not going to work because if I did a paradiddle that's going to turn it around and I'm going to play it off the same hand. So instead of a paradiddle we'll just do a single. We'll, we'll, instead of a paradiddle the turnaround will be just singles instead of or instead of. If that makes any sense to anybody. Somebody says, can I ask you something? How do you play 16th notes but only the first three of each pulse of a metronome? I don't know if you understand what I mean. I don't quite understand what you mean. If you can phrase the question a little bit better, maybe I can help you. Um, let's see, uh, so that's, one, two, three, four, uh, singles. Singles. So singles instead of that flamadiddle. All right, then it's the uh, paradiddle diddle. This one should be okay with the original sticking. Yep, that one works. Um, Uh, okay, so Tony's asking if you play the first three sixteenth notes of a measure, um, do you play right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, so 1E and 2E and 3E and 4E and it's personal preference. Usually whenever I'm going through a sticking like that, I try to keep it alternating. And that's general. That, that's kind of a general rule of thumb that I found in drum lines and things like that. If it's alternating, keep it alternating instead of, of doing that. Um, 1 e and 2 e and 3 e and 4 e and 1 e and 2 e and 3 e and 4 e and 1 e and 2 e and 3 e and 4 e and 1 e and 2 e and 3 e and 4 e and you could do it same hand 1 e and 2 e and 3 and the right hand then plays eighth notes 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 e and 2 e and 3 and 4 e and 1 e and 2 e and 3 and 4 e and or alternating 1 e and 2 e and 3 and 4 e and so it basically be right right left left right right left left 1 e and 2 e and 3 I always like to isolate what the individual hands are doing. It's a cool rhythm. Uh, fast. Uh, and then, so yeah, it's a personal preference and just depends on kind of the sound you want. All right, back to the Rudiment Smash Up. For anybody that's just joining, I'm going through a Rudiment Smash Up that I'm teaching tomorrow in a live lesson. It goes through all 40 rudiments, focusing on, this week on the inverted flam tap. So the first measure stays, uh, the first measure changes to the different rudiments. Second measure stays the same, and the second measure right now is three e and uh, and then a flamadiddle, and that turns it around. Um, but for some of these rudiments, I'm having to change that last beat. And uh, we're getting to the roughs, and so when we get to the roughs, that's going to be rough. <laughs> Saw the jokes I got. Um, okay, so cool. Now we got a five-stroke roll. So that's that that works. That's a five stroke roll, nine stroke roll, and a three and one e and a two and a three and four e and yeah. So uh, my students, if they've been going through all of these lessons, they know all of the like the first measure of every one of these so 40 lines they know 40 first measures and then they just like they they'll they'll stick in the inverted flam tap if that makes sense into this um 
so that's that's going to be that, that's going to be uh kind of how the, the rudiment smash up works so like every week you learn a new rudiment and then the smash up changes just a little bit you add to it and then anytime you want to run your rudiments you can say well i want to run my rudiments but i'm kind of need to focus on paradiddles or you know single stroke roughs or whatever and then you can add that into that second measure and run all 40 other rudiments in the first measure while focusing that second measure on the other one if that makes sense then we have the seven stroke roll one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a Yeah, that turnaround works. Uh, and, and we have regular flam taps. Into inverted flam taps, so brain twister. Turn around. Yeah, that works. Uh, get that turnaround. I haven't played through this yet, so I'm kind of learning it as I go. That works. Um, and I always like with the, the flam tap is one of the rooms that I like seeing what individual, what each individual hand is doing. And so if you look at the individual hands if we're playing flam taps, because then you can assess what technique needs to be used. So cool. I can use a, a molar three stroke. And that kind of helps me break it down with the left hand. So it starts on the and. This is one e and, two e and, three e and, four e and. And then this is one and a two, and a three, and a four, and a one. And so if we put those together, we have flam taps. If you have inverted flam taps, that's going to be a little bit different. So the rhythm would be. Uh, uh, So this is doing a right hand lead and then and this is so it's inverted flam taps are harder than flam taps because the accents on the back of the pattern so you're having two taps into an accent anyway that's kind of just the individual the individual stickings on with the exercise if you just joined i'm checking out uh, uh the sheet music for what i'll be teaching tomorrow uh, and I'm trying to run the turnarounds and make sure they work. And if they don't, change them. So now we have the flame accent. Uh, yeah, that works. One e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e. Uh, yeah, that works. So that works, but it le leading into the next line, it doesn't work because I got to start with less than 25. So that's not going to work. Okay, so modification. This, there'll be three different modifications to the second measure depending on what exercise you're on, line you're on. You can either end it with single 16th notes, paradiddle, flamadiddle 16th notes, or you can end it with, we're going to do two eighth note flams. So now it'll sound. And that'll give me space to do the roughs whenever I turn it around, because we're about to head into lesson 25s. And that is, there's no way to come into that rough whenever you're coming out of a, a double on that hand, because I would be coming out of a, a left-handed flamadiddle. So instead, I'm coming out of, and that'll work. So I'll play those two lines together, going from the, the uh, Flam accents to the inverted flam tap to the less than 25s to the inverted flam taps. One e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one. One e and a two e and a three e and a four. And, and then you start on the left hand. One e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e four e. And then yeah, so you will have to stick those flams at the end of that too. And as I've been going through and teaching all 40 rudiments, like this is a common thing. I always have to adjust the sticking at the lesson 25s. So I kind of know the places where the sticking needs to be adjusted. Um, what up, what up, what up, Mordecai? What up, Ryan? Eduardo?
What up, Michelle? All right, so, uh, yeah, back to the rudiments mashup. This is a third page of this mashup. So we've already gone through single strokes, double strokes, flams, paradiddles, um, single stroke four, single stroke rough, single stroke seven, double paradiddle, paradiddle diddle, triple paradiddle, um, and now we went through the flam accents, flam taps, and less than 25s, and now this is uh, just going to... Uh, Next rudiment, one and two and so we're gonna have to keep the second measure the same. Cool, that works. Then we have a 13 stroke, I think it's, yeah, 13 stroke roll. That one works for the turnaround, uh, 15 stroke roll. What up, Michelle? Those that just joined, I'm showing you what nobody ever sees of the part of my job, which is teaching online. So a lot of my time is spent prepping for lessons. And this is a lesson I'm giving on the inverted flam tap tomorrow for my members. And um, so I'm just proofing the sheet music and seeing where the turnarounds need to be different. Uh, and then we have a uh, 17 stroke roll. Followed by five stroke, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. That one works. Uh, six stroke roll. That one works. Ten stroke roll. stroke roll that one works too so going through all the rolls you notice like it's going in sequence you start with the easier rudiments and then we go to the diddle rudiments then we went to the flam rudiments then we went to the rough rudiments now we're in the roll rudiments that kind of goes through them in sequence uh, John is asking um, if I have a preferred um, set of practice sticks. Yeah, I, I mean, Vic Firth 5As, but I have one pair that I only use for the practice pad, and that pair will last me like years and years. Um, and then I don't ever take my practice pad sticks to the drum set. That way they just are always there, and I've got like a, like a, little, a little home, a little home for my sticks. Uh, Josh is asking, Darian, what up? Um, anybody not following Darian, you need to go following the man's, the man's bad to the bone. We went to school together. Uh, where do you go to join your lessons? You can go to stevensdrumshed.com. That's where this will live stream tomorrow. Um, but for those of you that just joined, I'm going through the sheet music and kind of showing the behind the scenes of what I do as a teacher. So this is like five pages of a rudiment smash up. I've written all 40 rudiments, 
the first measure changes every line the first measure changes to the different rudiments so single strokes double strokes paradiddles buzz rolls all that the second measure focuses on whatever rudiment you're working on that week and um it just happens to be the inverted flam tap we're on rudiment 39 which is inverted flam tap so we got one more rudiment to kind of round out all 40 rudiments on the website so i thought about putting in this in a book because it's just like it's a, it's almost 200 pages of of uh, of um exercises it's 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 a lot um josh is asking how often you practice every day i try to get in one and a half to two hours every day if it's a lesson prep day, usually closer to one to one and a half hours of actual practice time. I spend a lot of my time doing this and then communicating that to, to Tim uh, Buell, who does the sheet music for the members area. All right, uh, we did the 10 stroke roll, 11 stroke roll, and then we got That works. windmills I've always loved windmills the rudiment like I think windmills are cool but the rudiments better than actual windmills in my book nope uh, that turnaround's hard I try to notice too where the turnarounds are hard and I try to break down the turnarounds and make a note of it so that whenever I'm teaching through it, I can kind of show students uh, where they're gonna kind of get hung up, just kind of give them a warning before they go on it. What up, Sam? got Swiss Army Triplets, one of my favorites. Whoops. Uh, something cool about Swiss Army Triplets, they call them a dirty stroke roll or the dirty roll. Uh, and something that's cool about them is if you isolate the hands like I did earlier, so this is a Swiss Army Triplet. Left hand. Right, double stroke roll. Swiss Army triplet roll. So it's kind of like a roll, but a little bit dirtier. Um, uh, Lucas is asking, am I using a first or middle finger fulcrum? I'm using uh, the bird finger, if you will, uh, fulcrum. So fulcrum would be balance point. It's going to be where my balance point is. Somebody else asked, are sticks supposed to break along their length? Because mine do and apparently have wrong technique. Lots of people break theirs horizontally. Um, a lot of times when they shatter, they'll shatter kind of this way. If you're breaking a lot of sticks, if you're playing really hard, that's going to happen. But if you're breaking a lot of sticks, uh, you need to fix your technique period because what's happening is that stick you're holding so tight so when you hit a drum 
vibrations happen, force happens, it's gonna happen, and it can go and dissipate in several different ways. So what it, what the, the thing we hear is sound waves, that's one thing, that's part of the energy. So we hit a drum and sound waves come out, but there's also vibrations that happen back into the stick, vibrations that happen on a drum head. If you slow that down to super slow-mo, you can actually see that. And uh, uh, on the drum head, the vibrations happening in the stick, the vibrations happening. So when we clamp down on this and we hit, we're actually all those vibrations not only going to the stick, they're going back up in your hand and you're stopping them right there. So that brunt force stopping those vibrations happening uh, is, is what puts a lot of, in my, in my mind, puts a lot of strain and pressure on the stick. And, and you know, it's, it's akin to coming to a slow stop and then slamming on the brakes in a car. Uh, so you can actually hear the difference if you'll just take the stick and grip it real tight and hit your pad and then take it and grip it real loosely, the stick sounds different. You can actually hear the vibrations in the stick almost hollow sounding. Uh, I, I shatter, you know, used to, I would just eat my sticks up here. That happens much less than it used to since the years ago I changed my technique uh, and I, I just don't break sticks unless there's really a default in the stick. Uh, so yeah, if you're breaking sticks, you may want to look at your technique. All right, back to the sheet music. So. If you just joined, we're uh, we're hanging out. We're hanging out, and uh, we are. I'm going over the sheet music for tomorrow's live lesson for my members, and figuring out what stickings need to be changed. So we just did Swiss Army. Oh, I was telling you about Swiss Army triplets. So yeah, cool thing. So we have double stroke rolls, Swiss Army triplets. And in one day, I all of a sudden could play my Swiss Army triplets way faster because instead of thinking of them as Flam right, left, flam right, left. So thinking of that, when I isolated the hands, that's a Swiss Army triplet. Well, that's just doubles on each hand. This is a double stroke roll. It's the same thing. So we're basically taking that double stroke roll and kind of meshing it together. And so if I take it and slowly mesh it together, it comes into a Swiss Army triplet. And if I take it apart, it goes back into a double stroke roll. And if we keep going, it goes unison. And if we keep going, now we have Swiss Army triplets on the left hand into a double stroke roll on the left hand, we can cross it again. Swiss Army triplets on the left hand. Unisons, going back to Swiss Army triplets on the right hand. So that's taking those doubles and mushing them together and then going up the other way. So a Swiss Army triplet is essentially a double stroke roll mushed together. So if that, that for me, that was a mental break. It was like, oh wow, that like I get it now. And so um, when you do, uh, when you do the double stroke roll like that, you can merge them and turn into Swiss Army triplets. So your Swiss Army triplets, you should be able to play those almost as fast as you can play a double stroke roll once you make that kind of switch. So if I'm playing a fast uh, double stroke roll, or, or not fast, a medium tempo, and I merge those together, there's your Swiss triplets. So I can speed that up. Swiss triplets. Double stroke roll, Swiss triplets, double stroke roll, Swiss triplets. Anyway, that may help some of you, that may not help others. Um, let's see here. Uh, where are we? Oh yeah, okay. Now I gotta find where we are in the sheet music. I'm supposed to be proofing the sheet music and I wound up teaching, I'm sorry. Back to what we're doing. I'm proving sheet music for tomorrow's lesson. Stay on the task at hand. Ignore everybody watching. Focus. No. It's kind of fun. You ever have like a rhythm that you like, you start playing and then you're like, that's, 
I want to keep playing. And you keep playing the exercise not because you need to keep running it, but just because it's, it's actually just fun. Um, it's a fun sticking. So now we have um, uh, three strokes on a hand, so a uh, triple stroke roll. Uh. That works. Okay, that one works. After this, after I proof it, then I'll actually go back and practice it so that I, I'll be able to, I'll need to be able to, in the lesson, I'll do a playthrough of this, so I'll have to be able to play everything smoothly. Um, let's see here, let's see here. Okay, uh... Flam Paradiddles, we're to that line now. If you're just joining, this is the sheet music for tomorrow's live lesson for my members. Um, uh, I'm proofing it to find the turnarounds. This is a rudiment smash up, incorporates all 40 rudiments, and you change the second measure out depending on what rudiment you're working on. And so now we're on the, the Flam Diddles. Um, that's going to be the first measure, and the, the first measure is the old rudiment that you already know, so paradiddle, flam and all, and the second, the second measure stays the same, and it's the rudiment that you're focusing on that week. Uh, we've done, this is rudiment 39, so we're one rudiment away from doing all 40. Those are, that's in five different lesson courses on the website, actually. Uh, you can find those. Lots of, lots of content on there. It's like almost 200 pages of sheet music and exercises, but you only go through a couple each week. And it's all redundant. Like, uh, the students that have been following through these exercises already know 38 of the first measures. So they're, they're just learning the second measure, and then they plug it into the others. So, um... I could just as easy, for instance, like with this measure, I could do paradiddles. So we're doing uh, flamadiddles. See how that kind of works? Or you could do sextuplet, uh, you know, uh, uh, I forget what the measure was we used for that week. Anyway, so that turnaround works. Um, going on to Pataflaflas. Never will understand why they named it that. Yeah, that turnaround work, works. This one may not. That works, it's tough sticking. I don't know if it works, actually. It doesn't work. Okay, so we're gonna have to go back to the, remember we had the variations of the second measure. First variation was this. With a flammadiddle at the end. Second variation was this with singles at the end, third variation. So this one is gonna have to be the singles at the end. So. That works. I don't know why I decided to stream this whole process. 
don't really know why I decided to do that. Ah, uh, where are we? Oh, flame a diddle diddles. Flame a diddle diddle. This is a hard rudiment because it has um, uh, three notes in a row in a hand. And the, the accent's on the last. I just gotta learn to play it. <laughs> I gotta learn the drums. That works and then into the single stroke roll. Cool. All right, so anyway, that's part of the process that I do whenever it, uh, whenever I'm, I'm working on a lesson, trying to learn it as well as trying to. So I kind of did the proof here. I'll give those edits to Tim and then um, I'll go through and learn it myself so that I can actually play it for the live lesson tomorrow. So um, let's see here, let's see here. Um, much love to you back, Seabeck. Uh, let's see here. Somebody wants to be in the live video. Should we do it? Should we do it? Let's see. Uh, I don't know what's going on here. All right. Let's see if I can do this. Uh-oh. She's unable to join. Ah, I tried it. I tried it. Anyway, that's going to be the rudiment smash up for tomorrow for the lesson. All five pages of it. So yeah, that works. And then I'll just put it to a metronome, learn it, get the edits to town. It'll be a pretty simple process. So anyway, thanks for hanging around. I'll probably leave this stream up. You guys can come back and watch it later if you want to. And if you want to see the lesson, it's a, it'll be streaming tomorrow in the members area, and then it'll be it'll be recorded and uploaded to the members area on my website later. But that's kind of the process you never get to see that I get to do. So what up, Adam? All right. <laughs>